Hello everyone, my name is Dr. Paprash. Today I will be teaching about tympanometry. So before going to the tympanometry, as you know the sound transmitted to the external canal falls on the tympanic membrane then goes through the ossicles and finally to the cochlea. So when, is, when the sound is going through the external canal falls on the tympanic membrane and goes through the ossicles this tympanic membrane and ossicles they produce certain resistance for the sound transmission this is called as impedance that is impedance is nothing but resistance offered by the tympanic membrane and ossicle for sound transmission the reverse of the impedance is called as admittance nothing but how much energy is passing through the tympanic membrane and ossicles that is more the admittance more the energy is passing through the admittance is otherwise also called as the compliance that is how much effectively the tympanic membrane is vibrating when the middle ear pressure is equal in the equal to the external canal pressure the tympanic membrane is vibrating to its maximum extent as you know the eustachian tube equalizes the pressure of the middle ear to that of the external canal so then what is this tympanometry it's an objective test to find out the middle ear pathology this should be done when the sensory neural system is normal and on examination the tympanic membrane is intact you want to rule out the pathology in the middle ear you can go for the tympanometry how is this possible we'll see in the test so this is a probe tympanometry probe which is air sealed kept in the external canal it has three channels one is for the tone which is to give a tone of 220 hertz another one is to pump the air into the external canal either to increase the air pressure or to decrease the air pressure the third channel is to pick up the sound which is reflected back more the sound reflected back that means more resistance less the sound reflected back that means less resistance is given by these structures if you see these various tympanograms these are called as Jerger's classification of tympanograms in the type A tympanogram the compliance is seen at maximum at zero pressure that is ambient pressure that is when the air pressure is equal on either side of the tympanic membrane if you see at the positive pressure that is when the pressure is more you are pushing the tympanic membrane inside so when you push the tympanic membrane inside you are producing more stiffer system that is why the tympanic membrane is not showing much compliance as you move towards the ambient pressure you are pulling back the tympanic membrane to its original position that is why at ambient pressure it is showing more compliance vibrating more effectively again when you are giving a negative pressure you are pulling the tympanic membrane to outwards from its original position that is why again the compliance is decreasing that means it is producing more resistance for the sound transmission this type of curve is seen in normal middle ear in T type AS curve S means stiffer here the tympanic membrane is in its normal position so where is the pathology the ossicles are fixed that is stapes is fixed where will you see a stiff the fixed stapes that is in otosclerosis so when the stapes is fixed the amplitude of the vibration is seen at the no normal ambient pressure but it is not as high as your normal curve because the ossicles are fixed then if you come to the type AD curve you can see the compliance is maximum in positive as well as the negative pressure that means the tympanic membrane is flaccid whether it give a negative pressure or positive pressure it is vibrates to its maximum extent because it is disconnected from its ossicles that is there might be an ossicular discontinuity if you go to type B curve what does it tell us if you see there is no change in the compliance whether if you give a positive pressure 
or negative pressure that means there is something in the middle here there might be fluid that is you see in otitis media with effusion so whether you give a positive pressure or negative pressure the resin resistance is not changed much so that type of curve is type b curve a flat curve if you see the fourth one the complaints is maximum at the negative pressure where will you see this type of curve when the eustachian tube is blocked what will happen there is a negative pressure created in the middle layer and the tympanic membrane will be pulled inside so if you give a negative pressure okay you can pull the tympanic membrane to its original position and that that is when the compliance is maximum okay that is why you will see a maximum compliance in the negative pressure because in order to produce more compliance in the tympanic membrane you will have to pull the tympanic membrane outward okay in the retracted type of tympanic membrane so this type of curve is called as type c curve